In the last video, we saw that heart rate variability is increased by 38% since 2018, while reducing the resting heart rate by 15% over that same time span. In today's video, we'll take a look at what may be contributing to improved data for heart rate variability and resting heart rate since 2018. Now, the most obvious impact on heart rate variability and resting heart rate is physical activity. So let's start with that. Now, WHOOP provides the average daily heart rate as an index of physical activity, so let's take a look at correlations for the average daily heart rate with next day resting heart rate, which is what we can see here. On the y-axis, we've got the next day resting heart rate plotted against the previous day's average daily heart rate, again, as an index of physical activity on the x. And here we can see a significant positive correlation between the two. In other words, too much daily activity too often will be bad for my or potentially bad for my resting heart rate. So what about heart rate variability? We can see that data here, and now there's a significant negative correlation. In other words, too much daily activity too often is potentially bad for heart rate variability. So together we can see that the higher my previous day's average daily heart rate, that's significantly correlated with worse data for heart rate variability and the resting heart rate. So finding the balance between active and rest days is important for optimizing these metrics. So what does that look like? So here's a seven day plot for the average daily heart rate. Now on the active day, that's the day that includes my usual workout. It's an 85 minute full body workout that includes strength training, but also calisthenics, mobility, flexibility, etc. So after the active day, I purposefully titrate overall activity, the overall average daily heart rate lower for the next two days and then include my usual workout again, followed by at least two days of a titrated lower average daily heart rate. Now lately I've been going on a three day, four day cycle where I add an extra day of titrating the activity lower and I haven't experienced any strength or functional deficits during my usual workouts. So two workouts per week, that seems to be best for optimizing my heart rate variability and resting heart rate over time as it allows for enough recovery prior to each workout. Now, physical activity isn't the only variable that may affect the resting heart rate and heart rate variability. And body weight is another factor that seems to have a big impact. So what's the relationship for body weight with resting heart rate? So first, we'll take a look at my average monthly bo body weight since I started tracking cardiovascular fitness metrics in August of 2018. And note that body weight data is recorded every morning after using the bathroom and fasted. And then let's also take a look at the average monthly resting heart rate over that same time period. And note that these two plots seem to have a lot of overlap. During periods when body weight has been reduced, resting heart rate de has decreased. And conversely, during periods where body weight has increased, resting heart rate has increased. And rather than just looking at two plots and looking for similarities and overlap, is there a direct correlation? Is body weight significantly correlated with the resting heart rate? So for that, I have about 1,900 days of data, and we're going to look at daily heart rate, the daily resting heart rate versus body weight, which is what we can see here. And here we can see a significant positive correlation. In other words, as body weight increases, that's significantly correlated with a higher resting heart rate. And conversely, as my body weight has approached 142 pounds, which is where I current, around where I currently am, the resting heart rate has approached lower values around 41 beats per minute which then raises the question, what will happen if I'm able to get even leaner? Will I start to see an, uh, a resting heart rate of 40 or below? So stay tuned for that. We'll have to see how that develops in future videos. So what's the relationship for body weight with heart rate variability? So first, starting with the body weight plot, let's take a look at the overall gross morphology of the average monthly heart rate variability as shown there. And although the, there don't seem to be obvious, uh, an obvious overlap with the body weight plot, there are some trends. During periods where body weight has been reduced, heart rate variability has increased, and during a period where body weight increased, heart rate variability decreased. All right, what about the direct correlation, which is what we can see here, and again, this is almost 1,900 days of data. And here we can see a significant negative correlation between the daily heart rate variability with body weight. In other words, as my body weight has increased, that's significantly correlated with a lower heart rate variability, which is going in the wrong direction. And conversely, as my body weight has approached 142 pounds or getting leaner, heart rate variability has approached more youthful values close to 70 milliseconds. And again, just like I uh, pr pr uh, proposed for the resting heart rate, what will happen is I, if I'm able to get leaner, will I continue to see a, an inc a further increased heart rate variability? So stay tuned for that in future videos. 
So to answer the question, what's the relationship for body weight with heart rate variability and resting heart rate, they approach youthful values as body weight decreases. In other words, a higher heart rate variability in conjunction with a lower resting heart rate. All right, that's all for now. If you're interested in more about my attempts to biohack aging, including daily data for resting heart rate and heart rate variability, check us out on Patreon. And before you go, we've got a whole bunch of discount links and merch that you may be interested in, including dis discount links for at-home metabolomics, NAD quantification, epigenetic and telomere testing, oral microbiome composition, green tea, at-home blood testing with Cyfox Health, which includes APOB, diet tracking, or if you'd like to support the channel, you can do that with the website, buy me a coffee. We've also got merch, so if you're interested in wearing the Conquer Aging or Die Trying brand, that link and all the other links will be in the video's description. Thanks for watching. I hope that you enjoyed the video. Have a great day.